This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com In this video we are going to show you how to replace a system board in a PowerEdge 840 tower server. Um, so if you've never been to GreenPCGamers.com you should definitely check it out. In the description of this video we are going to post a link to our PowerEdge 840 parts guide. Um, and this page will have pretty much every component you can think of that you can install into a PowerEdge 840 server. Uh, as well as the part numbers and some links to recommended vendors uh, where to buy these components. Um, so if you haven't ordered a system board yet, um, you can also find the system board part number on this page as well. So um, some people will ask, well, how do I determine if my system board has failed? Um, typically, if you have an amber light on the front of the system and your system is not booting at all, um, or one of the telltale signs is if you have blown capacitors on your motherboard and those capacitors look like little pop cans uh, the top of them should be flat so if they are not uh, then you probably want to replace your system board and we're going to show you how to do that right now um, so we've got our power edge 40 tower server now this system is going on about nine ten years old now but it's a pretty classic file or um, you know just print server that you'll find in most small businesses so we're going to move our front bezel first that's going to give us access to our side panel uh, thumb screw. Ours is on pretty tight, so we're going to actually use a Phillips screwdriver to, to loosen it, and then we'll remove our side panel. It pulls towards the front of the chassis. All right, so next we are going to remove our fan baffle. All right, now we can remove the power supply connections to our motherboard. Um, so there's little plastic clips that will release those. We got a four pin, a 24 pin, uh, looks like a 10 pin on our back plane, and then we have a Molex connector on the optical drive. Now you may have other power connections plugged in, um, so just you know unplug everything that you need to to gain access to that system board. All right, so we have to remove our SAS 5 i controller. So we're going to remove some cables on the back plane. And then we do need a Phillips screwdriver to remove our retention clip on that PCI bracket. So while you're doing this, you'll want to look at your uh, RAID controller that we just pulled out. Look at the capacitor on there. That capacitor should be flat as well. If that's bulging, you'll want to replace that as well. All right, so we're going to unplug our fan. And then we can go and we're going to remove our processor at this point. If you can, buy a motherboard with a processor already installed. But if you can't, you will have to remove your, exist or your, yeah, your existing processor to install it on the replacement board that you plan to install. So you remove it like so. And then we are going to remove our memory as well. Because we plan to move that to our replacement motherboard. So we just un, uh, unclip one side, and then we can pull all four modules out at one time. All right, now we have our IDE connections for the optical drive, and then our control panel connection. Just remove those as well, set those aside. And all these connections should come off pretty easily, so um, be gentle, gentle yet firm uh, when removing them so you don't damage those cables because otherwise you'll have to order new cables as well. All right, so now we are going to pull up on this thumb screw. And from our orientation, we're going to turn that to the left, or actually backwards, sorry, towards the front of the chassis. And that motherboard pops right out. There are no screws required to remove to access this motherboard. All right, so here's our processor. We're gonna clean off the old heat paste before we, we reinstall this into our new, new motherboard. So we're using toilet paper. And so we're gonna clean the processor as well as the actual heat sink. Because we do need to re reapply new heat paste when we replace the motherboard all right so now that those are clean they're ready for ready to be installed on the new motherboard so this is our replacement motherboard and we're going to put our processor on now so it protects the pins when we reinstall this into our power j40 server 
All right, so we're going to put that right in place. Put our retention clip back on. And we'll apply heat paste once we actually get it reinstalled. All right, so we're going to put our board back in. Our, our replacement board, I should say. And shimmy it in there. And line it up. We're going to zoom in on... You want to line it up right by where it see where this little thumb screw is, and once it's lined up there, you just it clicks right into place really, really easily. So it should be flush with the back panel. All right, now we're going to apply some new fresh heat paste right in the middle of that CPU. And what's going to happen is when we put our heat sink on and that gets nice and warm. It'll distribute that heat paste evenly throughout that processor. All right, so put a little pressure on it. Put your retention clips back on. It'll lock it right into place. All right, so now we're going to reinstall our memory. And we just click each side into place, and that will lock into place and not give us hopefully any memory errors when we boot our system up. But so shimmy, shimmy them in. And they'll go in easily. Uh, it looks like the manufacturer code is going towards the right side or towards the front of the chassis with these. All right, so now we're gonna plug our power back in. Our 24 pin on the motherboard, our four pin. And then we also have our backpoint cable that we need to plug in. Oh, we're waiting for that. All right, so now we have our IDE and our control panel cables that we're plugging back in. I mean, essentially, we're just putting everything back together. So if you're um, if you're confident in what you're doing, you know what you watched, um, you should be in really, really good shape for reinstalling this board so we're going to plug our fan back in after we clicked it back into place and very importantly we need to put our sas 5 ir controller back in otherwise we won't be able to boot to our operating system and our led cable And we'll connect our SAS cable back to the backplane, and we'll plug our signal cable back into the motherboard from the backplane. All right. Now we need to lock our SAS 5 IR controller back into place. Now you you might have had other PCI cards that you had to reinstall. So at this time, you, I mean, install all of those cards back into place. And as you can see, we kind of fast forwarded and put our eight pin. Or sorry, our 10-pin backplane cable in. Or if you don't have the hot plug backplane, you'll plug that power back into that cable harness that plugs into the drives. All right, put our side panel back on. And then we are ready to put our bezel on after we tighten that side panel screw. And then we're ready to see if our motherboard replacement worked. Uh, now, if you did purchase a, a good motherboard from a, a, you know, a good valid vendor, um, this should boot right up. The only other thing that you might have to change is your boot sequence, um, which you can go into the F2 setup to change your boot sequence back to, uh, you know, whatever it is that you were booting to. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, please consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. Uh, we're happy to try to, try to help you out. Uh, thank you so much for watching.